Good evening, dear saints. Thanks for joining us again. As we gather on this Wednesday evening, our order of service is uh, the service of evening prayer. In your hymnals, that will be on page 243. And if you're looking for the bulletin, you can find that at divineshep.org. So keep that in mind as well. With that, we gather tonight again to hear our Lord's promises to us. We concentrate on the gospel reading, the only reading for tonight, of Jesus calling his disciples. With that, we begin this evening the service of light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. A light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my Father and to the 
Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool, holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called upon his name. They called to the Lord, and he answered them. In the pillar of the cloud he spoke to them. They kept his testimonies and the statutes that he gave them. O oh Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. Jesus in earth doth receive. Oh, may all this saying on from God and heaven wander. Here is hope for all who grieve. Jesus, sinners, God receive. We deserve but grief and shame, yet his words rich grace revealing. Pardon and life proclaim. Here our hills have perfect healing. Firmly in these words believe, Jesus sinners doth receive. Sheep that from the fold did stray, no true shepherd ever saved.
The reading for this evening from the Gospel of St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought them to the boats, they left everything and followed him. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. In the name of Jesus, amen. Will you pray with me? Father of grace and mercy, we thank you again for this day. And we thank you, Father, that you draw our eyes from our troubles, from our fears, and from all the things of this world to see you, our Lord, our Savior, and our Victor. Strengthen us now in the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is a mental picture that comes out of this gospel reading for tonight. It's a mental picture that that when I hear this text, I just can't quite get over it. Jesus has been preaching to the crowd in a borrowed boat. He tells the owner, Peter, a seasoned fisherman, by the way, to go out into the deep water and let down his nets in the middle of the day. Now, any seasoned fisherman who fishes with nets will tell you, you don't catch fish in the middle of the day. You catch fish at night. Any fisherman worth his salt knows this. But Peter listens, he obeys, and he goes out and lets down his nets. The nets are full and they're busting. They pull them in and there's too many fish for the boat that they're in. So Peter calls to his partners. Peter, excuse me, to James and John. You know them as the sons of thunder. They bring a second boat, and that one is also filled. The boats are now drafting so low in the water that one medium-sized wave would capsize the boat, and, and it would all be for loss. Here's the part that gets me. The boat could capsize at any moment. And Peter drops down to his knees in front of Jesus. Can you see it? Peter dropping down in the boat in front of Jesus, fish flopping around all around him, almost hitting him in the face. Why would he do that? He has a huge payday in his boat, and he doesn't do anything to protect it. He could lose his boat and all of the equipment there, and he doesn't seem concerned. The fish are flopping around all around him, splashing, and his only concern is to bow down before Jesus. Peter recognizes something profound. 
It's something that every follower of Jesus eventually realizes. Peter says, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. In the presence of Jesus' teaching and this miracle, Peter sees Jesus as Savior, and he sees himself clearly as a sinner, not being deserving to be in Jesus' presence. Peter, James, and John have been called into the holy ministry. They're not Bible scholars. They're not white collar. They're not polished or polite or professional. And we know already that Peter has no patience. The term uh, cuss like a sailor or like a fisherman more than likely applies to these two guys, these, all of these fishermen. And that should comfort us. Not, not the part about them cussing like a sailor, but the part that Jesus saves sinners. Jesus saves and calls sinners to be his followers. Jesus saves and calls ordinary men, women, and children in faith. And then he changes them. And he changes us. When Peter and the other fishermen were out in the boat, they were told to put out in the deep water, and they did. But I'm sure there were some questions there, maybe even some eye rolls there, questions that were probably going through their minds. Here? Now? You want us to fish now in this place? Okay, but don't expect much. And when they tugged on the nets for the first time, and they could tell that this net was full, their doubts were gone. They knew something, something miraculous had just happened. Luke tells us that they were astounded at what was going on. They couldn't believe it. And if they would have done this on their own without Jesus' command, they probably would have attributed it to just dumb luck. But they couldn't do that now. There was no way of getting around what Jesus said and what had just happened. That's why Peter bowed with his face down in the fish. He knew Jesus' power. And he knew clearly how unworthy he was to be in the presence of Jesus. And yet, how did Jesus respond back to Peter? Do not be afraid. I will make you fishers of men. You will be catching men. Peter was not excluded for his sin, for his lack of training of being a fisher of men. He was not told to go and clean up your act and then come back and reapply as a disciple. He was directed to stop looking at his sin and to look at his Savior. And Jesus would change him. That's how Jesus changes us. It's the same way. He pulls our eyes off of everything that we think we should do or that we think God has us do, and he has us focus on him himself. Jesus says to Peter, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Peter, for I will pay for your sin with my death. Don't be afraid, Peter, for I will supply all of your needs of soul and body as you now leave your occupation and vocation, and you become a fisher of men. Jesus says the same thing to us. He draws our eyes from, for our eyes for salvation and daily strength from ourselves and the things that we do to his actions. And the things that he promises to supply for us. Don't be afraid, dear child of God. I have forgiven you for that sin that's tearing you apart. Don't be afraid, child of God. I will supply for your needs and you will be astonished. Don't be afraid, dear child of God, when you are called to be a Sunday school teacher or to work with the youth. Don't be afraid when you are asked to serve as an elder or on some stewardship committee. I will form and shape you. I will equip you just like I did Peter and James 
and John. You see, it's, it's easy to be astonished when we look and see what Jesus has already done for us. He is God after all. And if we are not astonished when we come into his presence, when we look at the cross and we see how Jesus has laid down his life for sinners, and when he took up again his life and he has taken away all of our sin, if we are not seeing Jesus and being astonished, we are not truly seeing Jesus for who he is. It's also easy when we look at our own lives to be discouraged because of who we are. We are sinners, and we deny just like Peter. We're Thomas, who can't wrap his head around this whole resurrection thing, and it's just easier for him not to believe. We are the Easter disciples, locked in our houses for fear of viruses and job furloughs, and maybe even our own death. Dear child of God, Lift your eyes and don't look at your sin and your worry and your fear, but look to Jesus. Suffering and crucifixion did not stop him from loving you, from making us saints where we were sinners. Death could not hold him, and because of Jesus' resurrection, it cannot hold you. With all of the disappointments And the discouragements in our world that pull us down. Jesus calls to us the same way he calls to Peter. Do not be afraid. Look to Jesus because Jesus died for sinners. He died for you. Thank God there is no entrance exam into the kingdom of heaven. That's why over and over again you hear me say, it's all gift. All of these things that God bestows on us are gift. They have nothing to do with us and our ability, only with God's great love for us. The waters of baptism are a gift that gives faith directly to us and helps us to see Jesus for who he is, Savior and Lord. We see his cross as where we have received salvation and forgiveness of sins by the shedding of his blood. His holy word breaks into our darkness with his Easter words of do not be afraid. These are not only the words of the angel, but these are Jesus' very words to Peter and Jesus' very words to us. His real presence in the Holy Supper assures us that our Lord is here with us, pulling our eyes from our sin and our fear that we might see him in his victory which he has given to us. Dear saints, Jesus changes us. He changes us from sinner to saint. He changes us from fishermen to fishers of men. He changes us from laymen and women to church officers and someone in leadership at the church. He changes us from someone that is all caught up in our own troubles to one who is at peace because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He changes us from one who is in fear to one who is fearless because there isn't anything that can overcome Christ's love for you, dear child of God. Jesus changes us and he gives us hope. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. He one has done great things to me.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Matthew, for Scott, for John, for Randy, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Donald, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they might be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present to await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those struggling with diagnosis, for those who are waiting for the Lord healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. Almighty, everlasting God, your Son has assured forgiveness of sins and deliverance from eternal death. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit that our faith in Christ may be increased daily and that we may hold fast to the hope that on the last day we shall be raised in glory to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Well, thank you, dear saints, for joining us again tonight. We'll gather together next Wednesday evening for evening prayer again at 6 o'clock. Also tomorrow afternoon there, is still, uh, there are still spots available for you to sign up for Holy Communion. You can find that sign up on divineshep.org. And if the time that you would like to come is already filled, please call me. We can, uh, we can put families on both sides of the church. Uh, we can accommodate more people that way. So if you'd like to uh, come and receive the Lord's gifts, please let me know. With that, go in his peace. Thanks be to God.